Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to the town uh, council chambers, May 5th, 2014, 7 p.m. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item number two, roll call, please. Councilor Carrasco? Present. Councilor Clements? Excused. Councilor Langevin? Present. Councilor Mana? Present. Councilor Marcucci? Present. Councilor Mar Moriarty? Present. Councilor Nicola? Present. Councilor Pelequin? Absent. Councilor Vandal? Present. Seven here? Yes. Thank you. Gender item number three, consider and accept the town council meeting minutes of Monday, April 28, 2014. So have a motion? Second. Anyone have any corrections or anything? Seeing none, show of hands, please. Got that, thank you. Gender item number four, subcommittee reports. A general government, Council Nicole. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The meeting of the, oops, sorry. <laughs> Wrong one. <laughs> a meeting of the General Government Subcommittee was held on Tuesday, April 29th in the Rice Conference Room. In attendance were myself, committee members Councillor Vandal, <laughs> Councillor Moriarty, and citizen member Michael Jaynes. Also in attendance were Karen Harnoy, R Roger and Estelle Cowett, Ron Pluff, Scott Benoit, Steve Brady, and Shane Woodson. Holly Christo was excused. I call the meeting to order at 6.32 p.m. Agenda item number one, vote to approve additional changes to schedule one for the following positions. S10, which is the airport manager, FP4, which is the deputy police chief. Mrs. Harnoy stated that at a previous PPP subcommittee meeting, Chief Charette recommended changing a lieutenant position to deputy, to deputy police chief. This position is being added to schedule one. Can you hear me? Thank you. You can hear me now. Okay. Um, this position is being added to Schedule 1 so that if, a, if the position is added, it will already have a pay schedule assigned. Councillor Vandal and Michael Jaynes said they are not in favor of adding Deputy Police Chief position as it seems we are just growing government. Mr. Jaynes asked that if by adding this position we would be adding a person. Lieutenant Woodson said they are not adding a person. They are only shifting positions around. Lieutenant Woodson said he has been doing the job of a deputy police chief for the past four years. I stated that I believe we are just compensating Lieutenant Woodson for the work he's been doing for four years and I'm in support of that. Councilor Moriarty said that at the PPP subcommittee it was stated that they would be setting up another meeting to discuss the position and the fee structure. As we do not have any further information on this, he is not weighing in. As far as the Schedule 1 change, he said it's just housekeeping to get things on a fee schedule. Councillor Moriarty asked about the airport manager position. Previously, this was a leased venture operation, and it is now run by the town. An airport manager position needs to be created. Councillor Moriarty asked how this would be a revenue-generating asked how this would be a revenue-generating operation. Mrs. Harnoy said they are now working on determining an expense and revenue budget and would present to the council at a later date. A motion was made by Councilor Moriarty and seconded by Michael Jaynes to split agenda item 1 to agenda item 1A, S10, Airport Manager, and 1B, FP4, Deputy Police Chief. Vote by a show of hands. All in favor, four to nothing. Motion was made by Michael Jaynes, seconded by Councilor Moriarty with a favorable recommendation to council to approve the change to Schedule 1 to add the position of S10 Airport Manager. Vote by a show of hands. All in favor, four to nothing. A motion was made by Councilor Moriarty and seconded by Michael Jaynes with a split recommendation to Council to approve the change to Schedule 1 to add the position of F04, this should be FP4, um, Deputy Police Chief. Vote by a show of hands. Two in favor, two opposed. Agenda item number two, 
New business, A, vote to establish a bicentennial committee gift account under chapter 44, section 53A, in order to accept monetary donations to be expended for events, parade, promotional items, and other related expenses, and to submit to council for ratification. Councilor Moriarty said the idea here is based on state law. This allows the committee to accept donations for the event. A motion was made by Councilor Moriarty and seconded by Michael Jaynes with a favorable recommendation to council to establish a bicentennial committee gift account under chapter 44, section 53A in order to accept monetary donations. Vote, vote by a show of hands, all in favor, four to nothing. B, vote to establish a trail committee gift fund account under chapter 44, section 53A to establish record keeping for money raised to assist with maintenance and construction of the trails in Southbridge and to submit to council for ratification. No discussion was held other than in the fact that I did read the uh, memo from Mr. Um, Brady, I believe. Oh, nope, that was the bicentennial, sorry. Um, there was no discussion held. A motion was made by Council Moriarty and seconded by Michael Jaynes with a favorable recommendation to Council to establish a, a trail committee gift fund account under Chapter 44, Section 53A uh, to establish record keeping for money raised to assist with maintenance and construction of the trails in Southbridge. Vote by a show of hands. All in favor, four to nothing. Motion made to adjourn by, was made by Michael Jaynes, seconded by Council Moriarty. Vote by show of hands. Meeting adjourned at 7.05 p.m. PM re respectfully submitted Evelyn Rivera, recording clerk. I have nothing um, coming up in the near future. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Council Moriarty, do you have a question? Yeah, I, more so just an addition, I think, for the minutes. I, I just thought it was important to note that uh, as part of the discussion with the, the deputy chief position, uh, which is not reflected here, is just that uh, it, it was stated and, and affirmed by those present, uh, including uh, Ms. Harnoy and, and uh, Lieutenant Woodson that, that if and when uh, the, the fee schedule or pay schedule rather was, was adopted by the council that that was by no means any sort of guarantee that uh, the promotion was a sure thing either. That they're, they're not lock uh, and parcel sort of thing. That they are separate items that will be separate actions. So I just wanted to make sure that was reflected that uh, uh, and if I recall the discussion that the, the comment Lieutenant Woodson had made was, was if this was to pass, it's not as if on July 1 that the, any promotion would be made, that, they, that the police department would be coming forward at a future date in order to ask for that promotion. Thank you. Is that all? Yep. Thank you. Okay, moving on to BDBW, Council of Andal. Thank you. No report, no meeting schedule. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. C, Education and Human Services, Councilor Marcucci. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We held a meeting on Thursday, April 24th. Meeting of the EHS subcommittee was held on Thursday, April 24th in the George Parent Conference Room. In attendance were myself, Councilor Clemens, Citizen Member Leanne Pate, and Martina Shea. Also in attendance were Jill Congdon, Jania Swayaki, Nancy Swayaki, and Bill Dimitri. Call the meeting to order at 7.02 p.m. Agenda item number one, discuss playground material for West Street School. Ms. Condon gave a little history of the West Street School playground. The PTA raised approximately $12,000 for the playground. They also received a grant and have purchased the playground equipment. The playground committee is looking for approval from the council to go ahead with the project since this is town property. They would like to do a community build project and would raise further funds and get in-kind donations for the construction. The subcommittee asked further questions on insurance, clearing and removal of the current playground equipment and preparation of the site. Signage and recognition will be up to the playground committee. A motion was made by Councilor Clemens, seconded by Leanne Pate, with a favorable recommendation to council to give permission for the installation of the playground contingent on all concerns and liabilities being met. That passed 4-0. A motion was made by Councilor Clemens, seconded by Leanne Pate, to allow citizen members present to bring an item to the subcommittee that was not on the agenda. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor. Nancy Swayaki said that the citizens from Woody Crest Ave neighborhood are concerned with the traffic on Cole Ave. She wanted to know who authorized the painting of the curbing on Cole Ave 
from the driveway of the school to Woody Crest. This curbing used to be yellow and it's now painted white. It is causing a problem and a safety hazard as cars park on the side of the street and it makes it very narrow entrance to the street connecting with Woody Crest. The other concern is that parents dropping off their children for the daycare park along that side of the street blocking access up to the road. The citizens were advised to get that on the agenda and go to the traffic commission meeting on April 29th. A motion to adjourn was made by Martina Shea, seconded by Leanne Pate. Uh, all in favor for zero. Meeting adjourned at 7.45 p.m. Respectfully submitted, Evelyn Rivera. And I'm hoping, Mr. Chair, that we could get this on the um, next council meeting as they'd like to get this yep. going. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Council. D, Planning and Development. Oh, sorry, Council Mayor, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. Um, for the record, I am on the subcommittee, but I was not here and I was excused and it doesn't reflect that. And also under agenda item number one for other, it says Leanne Page, if that could just be corrected to Leanne Pate. That's it, thank you. Thank you, you got those changes? Thank you. Uh, D, Planning and Development. Um, Council of Columbus has no uh, meeting to report and nothing scheduled at this time. E, Protection of Person and Property. Uh, Council Moriarty. Thank you. Uh, there, we have no meeting minutes uh, for tonight. We read a couple of them last week. I will say, however, we do have a meeting scheduled for Thursday, May 15th at 7 p.m. here in the Jewish Parent Conference Room. Uh, at the moment, uh, there are three agenda items planned. One, uh, and, and, and I defer to the police chief if we keep this one on, is, is the Cole Avenue issue that was referenced at uh, EHS. Uh, also, uh, we have an issue with an animal control kennel, a possibility of, of uh, getting some money for that. And the police department promotions are also on that agenda item. And if, if the fire chief, in light of things that have gone on as of late, uh, has anything in particular he'd like to add, by all means, just let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, F, Town Manager Search Committee, Council Marcucci. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have no minutes to report, but we do have a meeting. It's actually going um, to be this Thursday in the George Parent Room, and this is a conference call with Don Jutton to give us an update on what he's been doing on his end. And just for the general public, Councillor Clemens has been in contact with the ICMA to come in and possibly give a presentation um, on the change, the potential change, before the June election with the government and uh, what's on the ballot. So I'm sure she'll be getting in contact with us. They're going to do um, just a presentation, not before council, uh, just to inform the general public as what the pros and cons would be of um, a government change. And that will be announced shortly. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Moving on to agenda item number five, uh, I just have a few things, just informational, um, just reminding the public, uh, we have a rabies and microchip clinic Saturday, May 17th, 9 to 11 at the DPW Golford Road. Um, and also to remind the citizens that we do have our curbside yard waste uh, pickup. Uh, it's in effect right now and that goes to June 1st, uh, so just make sure you do the proper uh, bagging, proper bag, and the proper uh, cutting down of sizes and stuff like that on the brush and stuff like that. And obviously we have our roll-off dumpster on Golfer Road if you want to do bulk yourself and drop it off. Um, with that being said, um, as we all know, um, our community has been affected probably in the last three weeks um, that quite frankly, I will speak for everyone up here that we're not proud of what's happening in our community. We have a person or people in our community 
that, quite frankly, I don't even deserve this attention. But I believe that the public needs to be informed as much as possible, and I'm speaking to the person that is lighting fires on uh, multifamily homes. Um, so with that being said, I ask the police chief and fire chiefs to come and uh, let the public know what they're doing and uh, just give out some information um, and reach out to the public. So I will pass that over to the fire and police chief and thank you for coming tonight. Thank, thank you for having us. Um, again, I'm sure everybody's truly concerned, especially those residents in that neighborhood. Uh, I can assure you that we're all concerned at the fire department. Um, it's certainly putting all of our resources to the test. Um, so far, we're, we're doing very well, um, but I don't want to keep taxing that, you know, resources heavily as we have been. Um, again, the message that we keep reminding everybody is, you know, do your best to maintain your own property. Watch your neighbor's property. Um, we really believe that the neighborhood themselves are going to be able to help us immensely figure out who or, you know, if there's more than one who's doing this. Um, we have a number of ways that you can get in contact with us for any information. We've gotten a ton of information now and we're following up every single thing that we can. Uh, the police department's doing an outstanding job following up anything that we get, but no piece of information is too small. Um, there is an arson hotline number that you can call. Um, I believe it's running at the bottom of the screen. If it's not, I'll give it to you. It's 1-800-682-9229. And it's a $5,000 reward for anybody that gives us any information that may help detect or prevent an arson fire. So $5,000 is a lot of money. Um, we're hopeful that maybe we can get some more information and some good information that we can follow up on. Um, our fire prevention inspector and the, uh, my arson investigators have been out in the neighborhood consistently trying to figure you know, out what has been going on and how we can best help the police department with the investigation as far as to who's doing this. So um, if anyone wants to get in contact with us, they certainly know our number at the fire station. It's 508-764. 5430. The number at the police station is 508 764 5420. If you don't feel comfortable talking to the arson hotline or the fire department or the police department, reach out to someone. Any information is not, you know, going to be overlooked. We want to follow up on every single thing that we can. This is truly a serious event that is going on in that neighborhood. We're trying to do our level best to, you know, figure out who's doing this and, and put a stop to it. So I'll, I'll pass uh, the investigation on to uh, the police chief, and he can give you any more information on that. Good evening. We want to assure everybody that every resource we have, we've reached out to multiple other agencies, and they've immediately come down, are working with us in many ways. Uh, we are going to be as visible as possible. You will see a lot of us, but I want to assure folks also that there are, every day, a lot of things going on that you may not see. We have asked and received a tremendous amount of assistance with this, and we continue to. As recently as 11 o'clock today, we met with those agencies. We're reviewing what we have. We do have a lot of information. But at this point, uh, as the fire chief said, we, we honestly believe that the best information here is from the folks in the neighborhood and the folks in the community. So please, anything you see, if you feel as something is not right, give us a call, Facebook, whatever you're comfortable with. Reach out to us, it is absolutely confidential, and we are going to look into every little piece that we get. So we, we are counting on your help. You are a key component of this, and we want to assure everybody we will continue to work as, as hard as possible on, on every piece that we get. Uh, if there's any questions, the fire chief and I will try to answer. Anyone have any questions? I just, I personally, again, um, I was able to go to the last fire and uh, First, I want to thank the police department and the fire department. Um, and I can 
say I witness that you do have every available resource out there and I appreciate that all you're trying to do and and you know I have spoken to some people that live in the neighborhood and they say the same thing that you are visible um, it helps and you know it's 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 a sad thing and um, I just hope with this message out there that um, this is their neighborhood this is our town um, and the more eyes and awareness out there will help you hopefully get to where we want to do and get this person and uh, put them behind bars so people in that neighborhood uh, can sleep. So I, I, I do want to thank you guys for everything. And um, if, you know, as the chief said, if you're uncomfortable with talking to them, hey, you can call me. I'm sure you can call any one of us up here. It will be kept confidential. Um, um, so, with that being said, I want to thank you again, and um, I know there's a couple hands up. I I'll go with Councilor Nicola first. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Chiefs, do you have any suggestion for the people in that neighborhood as to what they can do at this level to help assure some sense of con some, some kind of comfort? I know that some of the people in that neighborhood are keeping lights on at night. Is there something that they should be doing or not doing? Well, this, this is very similar to when we get a, a call, say, a bomb scare at a school. Now, the folks who work in that school know that building better than anybody. Now, we are certainly going to be there. We're going to be out all the time. But the folks in that neighborhood, they're the ones who really know what fits and what doesn't. It, it may be something, it may be just a, a, a person on a bicycle going by, uh, you know, a strange barking at night when you, you know the dogs in your neighborhood. And I, I don't want to minimize this, that if you feel it's out of place, give us a call. You know, we all tend to do it. Everybody does that. It was just a small thing. Geez, you know, I didn't think much of it. And that's understandable. But I think the best thing we can do is, is just be vigilant. It, it really is to help protect ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Let me Thank just you. let me just add that you know if you can keep your property neat and orderly, uh, if you've got a lot of clutter, get rid of it, clean it up, keep everything nice, tight, orderly. Also, ensure that you have good working smoke detectors in your home. Because again, I mean, you know, at some point you're going to fall asleep, and the only way you're going to wake up is if that smoke detector activates and wakes you up. So make sure you have a good working smoke detector. If you don't have one, call the department. We'll figure out a way to get you one. But I want to make sure everybody has some type of early warning systems to notify you that there's something wrong and that you need to pay attention. If you do have, if there is, unfortunately, another fire in that neighborhood, check your area as fast and as quickly as you can. Because what we've noticed is sometimes there are other things going on that we're not aware of yet. So truly, you need to be the eyes and ears to help us help you. I mean, I guess that's the best message we can give so far. Thank you very much. Council Marcucci. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Chief, have you determined how the fires are being set? That's an investigation thing. Yes, yes, we, we're very aware of methods uh, and it's all part and parcel and respectfully there's no, just some pieces that. right no yep. we are being every little piece is being looked at okay, absolutely council yep. any other questions council moriarty oh, uh, just just uh, kind of building off of what uh, chief defranzo noted aside from just making sure that going out and getting a smoke detector if you don't have one just make sure you've even got the batteries in there. I know a lot of people tend to take the battery out or because it gets annoying or because they haven't uh, checked it in a while. So just check those. Don't just take it for granted that it's there and, and that, that might happen. But additionally, is there, uh, is there anything that the town, Big T Town, us, can do that will help uh, in any way, whether it's resources, uh, additional lighting, street lighting, cameras, any of those sort of things that would actually be useful in any way? We have reached out to people with some of those resources, and if there's anything we can think of, we, yeah. we will come and ask. Uh, and I do appreciate that, because that's really what it's, what's going to help this. And speaking to the folks who do this statewide, it's really 
in almost every instance, it's the community coming together, putting these little pieces together that really keeps you safe. This is the, uh, the ultimate in community policing, really. We, we need all of those pieces, but yes, thank you. I'll say Council. Council Carrasco. Yeah, through you, Mr. Chair, I want to, first of all, I want to say thank you um, to both departments for the job well done. Um, under pressure and under these conditions. Um, I, this would be a reference to um, Chief Defonso. Do you think it, this would be ideal time for our families to kind of, those with children, to establish safety plans, evacuation procedures, um, just to kind of have this in place, just like a reminder. I know we talk about it during Fire Prevention Week, but I think as this is a hot topic, I think just a message to get out there. Yeah, truly, uh, I do. You're right. We do mention it during Fire Prevention Week, and we usually have a consistent message of, you know, once you get out of your home, and this might not even be your home. Let's use the town hall. You need a meeting place where accountability can be taken, so we can ensure we have everybody, or that everybody's out of the building. So once we know that everybody's out of the building, we can now focus on the fire problem. Obviously, in, in our scale of emergencies, life safety is number one, and then. Property conservation is number two. So, um, you know, we want to make sure we do have everybody else. So, yeah, please have a meeting place. Make sure everybody's accounted for. And as soon as the first arriving, you know, fire truck arrives, tell that crew that arrives everybody's accounted for. So now that's one less thing they have to worry about. And we can move on to the fire problem. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Council Amanda. Yes, is it working? Okay, through you. Um, I know this has been restricted to one area. So is that all you're concentrating on? I don't think you can really talk about that, but I guess my biggest fear is, is it spreading? So are you recommending to everyone in the community to be vigilant and, and do the inspections in their yard and whatnot? I think at this point, everybody should. Um, I, again, you're right. So far, everything's been focused to one area of the community. That doesn't mean that it may not happen in another area of the community. So everybody should be vigilant. Everybody should be helping their neighbor out. You know, be the eyes and ears for everybody in your neighborhood. If you have the time, maybe you can figure out a way to share the time of taking the time to be the eyes and ears for the community in your neighborhood. So everybody should be vigilant. Everybody needs to, you know, pass on information. If you hear something, even if it's a crazy wild, you know, statement, pass it on. Because nothing is too crazy at this point at all. So thank you. Anyone else? I thank you guys again. Please thank, thank your staff on our behalf. Moving on uh, to agenda item number six, town manager's announcements. Ms. Hanois? Thank you. I do not have any this evening. Okay. Moving on to agenda item number seven, swearing in and presentations. I have a proclamation for Jacob Edwards Library, 100th anniversary. I would ask Ms. Morrissey also to come up here. Uh, first, first of all, it uh, uh, gives me great, great privilege to uh, present this to Margaret Morrissey and the staff and the uh, board at Jacob Edwards Library. Uh, they just had a celebration Thursday that unfortunately I couldn't attend. I would thank Council Nicola for, for stepping in for me, but um, uh, I, I got to say I do have some fond memories there as a child. Uh, I re remember we used to ride our bike there as a family, the kids, and go downstairs and run downstairs and, you know, uh, children's books and uh, crafts and all that. So I have great memories there. Uh, with that being said, um, I want to present this to Margaret and her wonderful staff there. It uh, says Jacob Edward Library, whereas since the inception, the Jacobs Edwards Library has inspired learning, education, and culture in the Southbridge and in the community. Whereas the town of Southbridge hereby recognizes the dedication and determination of the staff, trustees, volunteers, 
and countless community supporters who have helped to realize this century's milestone. Whereas today, May 1st, 2014, we honor Jacob Edwards Library past and celebrate its present and future. Whereas, may we recognize the achievement of the first 100 years as a source of encouragement and to go beyond and to achieve greater things for the people of Southridge during the next century. Now, therefore, the town of Southridge, Massachusetts, by the town council hereby proclaims May 1st, 2014, to be the day of celebration for the Jacobs Edward Library. We urge all citizens of Southridge to recognize and celebrate the 100th anniversary. Uh, signed by Council Chair David S. Langevin and Acting Town Manager Karen Hanois. Um, I hope you have another 100 great years. I, uh, it's just a beautiful library. It's a beautiful thing for our downtown, and it, it offers so many resources, uh, not just for our community, but other communities too. So I want to congratulate you and please, on behalf of the council, congratulate your wonderful staff. Uh, and thank you again. Thank you very much, Councillor Langevin, and thank you to the um, Town Council. It's my great pleasure to be here this evening to receive the proclamation on behalf of the staff, the trustees, the friends, and the community of Southbridge. I think we all really appreciate the support we get from Town Hall and to know that we are serving the community. I would like to think that more people would come through the doors, but it's very gratifying that we are busy, and, but we have a very big space and a very bright space, and it certainly can hold a lot of people. So I'm speaking to people at home right now. If you um, would like to come, there's plenty of room, and for the summer we're going to be doing lots of programming, and I hope you'll find something that will interest you. Um, I would like to thank you very much for this proclamation. It means so much, and I appreciate the sentiments very much. And I also would like to thank um, Councillor Nicola for presenting officially at the um, ceremony. And um, it was just wonderful uh, to see so many people from the community come and share with us. And I think it was really en fait. But there are plenty of opportunities through the year to come and join us. Um, we will be celebrating something every month, if not many things. And I hope to see everybody there at some stage. So thank you very much indeed. We really appreciate this. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> Moving on to agenda item number eight, Citizens Forum. If there's any citizen that would like to come before and speak on something that is not on the agenda. Uh, anyone out there that would like to speak? Seeing none, we're going to move on to agenda item number nine. Vote to accept the warrant for the town local election on Tuesday, June 24, 2014. So moved. Second. Any discussion on this? Councilor Manor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you. Uh, I just would like to remind the people at home to carefully review question number one that is going to be on the petition. Uh, it, it's in regards to the petition, um, in regards to your future government. Um, the question itself, it's a summarization of the petition. And I did um, upload the petition onto my website. If anyone would like to have a look at that and read through it fully, you are able to at getinvolvedinyourtown.com. And I also uploaded the 1956 bylaws that the petition refers to, so you can get a general idea of what this petition is about and what potentially your government could be about. So it's up to you to do your homework. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call anyone. Call the town clerk's office, the town manager's office, call any one of us up here. Just please do your homework, and that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Carrasco. Yes, um, I, I just, through you, Mr. Chair, um, I just want to 
um, there was a correction that I spoke to our town clerks in regards to um, the Spanish. Um, if, if we look at it, I'm not sure if any, somebody from the public received what we received, but I just, I know um, there was a, 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 just a small minor typo um, in regards to the time um, in the Spanish part of it. It should say AM, which is the same, but it says 7 PM. Um, so I just wanted to let anybody that might have received this copy that I have already approached and spoke to Maddie about it, and that has been changed. Thank you very much for joining that, Councillor. Much appreciated. Anyone else? Roll call, please. Councillor Langevin? Yes. Council Mana? Yes. Council Marcucci? Yes. Council Moriarty? Yes. Council Nicola? Yes. Councillor Vandal? Yes. Councillor Crosco? Yes. Seven yes. Thank you. Motion passes. Agenda item number 10. Vote to establish a bicentennial gift, uh, excuse me, bicentennial committee gift account under Chapter 44, Section 53A in order to accept monetary donations to be expended for events, parades, promotional items, and other related expenses. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion on this? Seeing none, roll call, please. Councilor Mana? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Crosco? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Seven yes. Thank you. Motion passes. Agenda item number 11, vote to establish a trail gift fund account under Chapter 44, Section 53A to establish record keeping for money raised to assist with maintenance and construction of the trails in Southridge. Have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion on this? Seeing none, roll call, please. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Council Moriarty? Yes. Council Nicola? Yes. Council Vandal? Yes. Council Crosco? Yes. Council Langevin? Yes. Council Mana? Yes. Seven yes. Thank you. Motion passes. Generating number 12, Council's Forum. I will start with Council Carrasco. Yes, um, I just have a uh, few things this evening. Um, first of all, um, I just want to thank um, the uh, West Street School um, for offering um, the opportunity for parents to come and have lunch um, with their children. Um, me and my wife have um, taken advantage of every month they do it, and we have taken advantage of it, and we do have lunch um, with our, um, our son. Um, at West Street, and I just want to thank them. But also, um, um, last week uh, was like National, um, aka Lunch Lady or Food Service Day, and I just want to acknowledge and thank those that um, serve our children, um, the the aka Lunch Ladies or um, all those that work in food services. Um, I want to thank them uh, for for their job that they do is such an important and critical job. Um, in our t in our schools, so I just want to thank them for their service to our community, um, and also as a participant of programs of the library. Um, unfortunately, I was not able to um, be at the celebration, um, but um, I want to say thank you. Um, I have participated with many of their programming um, for the children. They do a great job, and I just again I want to encourage the public to take advantage of our library. Um, it's well equipped, um, well staffed. Uh, people are very courteous, and uh, it's it's an awesome place to be. And to all my Mexican friends in the community of Southbridge, I just want to wish them a happy Cinco de Mayo. That's all I have today. Thank you, Council Council Moriarty. Thank you. Uh, kind of building just off that library uh, piece, I, I think Council Nicola can can uh, attest to the fact that for a Thursday afternoon. Uh, and it was, it, was, it was fairly well publicized, I suppose, but I think we all who put things together realize that how difficult it is to really let people know about things. But I was really well surprised with the, the attendance that, that turned out uh, on a Thursday afternoon uh, for the, the centennial kickoff for the library. It was a very, very large crowd, uh, a lot of good people there. And, and I think, you know, we heard a lot, there were a lot of people that had uh, brief speeches and and I think that uh, one thing that, that a lot of us tend to forget is, is, or not realize, is just how much the library really has to offer. It's not just going out and, and grabbing, uh, you know, a 1957 textbook or something to that effect. There's, 
DVDs, music, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of the microfilm, microfiche they have. They have reading, you know, there's just so much that's there, uh, internet access, et cetera. So uh, just a great building. Also, um, I don't want to go too far onto it because it, we've, we've talked about it uh, probably at every meeting, but again, uh, that same day, Thursday, I was stopped uh, out on, on Main Street by a couple of uh, women who uh, were upset that, that uh, they had had a number of issues at the crosswalks and trying to get around town when they go for their their daily strolls in terms of just drivers and uh, kind of not paying attention. Uh, in fact, at one point, uh, uh, as they were coming across a crosswalk uh, legally, that uh, apparently somebody wasn't very happy about it as they took a quick right turn on red and uh, kind of flipped them off apparently. So I uh, just want to kind of, again, I think most of the people who watch probably do, but uh, just just be courtesy, uh, courteous rather, and, and pay attention and and kind of think about those sort of things. Um, and also, uh, just, just to kind of pass along, we, uh, I think the last meeting was when we, uh, we, we accepted some money for potholes, and, and those same folks let me know that uh, they, they reside at Dresser Park, and they say that uh, right at the end of the driveway for Dresser Park, there is a very large pothole that has apparently been there for about a year or more, uh, and they, they were hoping that that could be addressed. So I just wanted to pass that along. And then lastly, uh, as, as we come up, uh, we're in May now, and, and we're coming up on uh, Memorial Day and Flag Day, so I've, the council I passed out to, and I have some out there somewhere, and it'll be in the newspaper and such. Um, looking for my props. <laughs> but we have a flag subscription service that we've done the last few years as a fundraising event for the Relay for Life, and, and what we have is, is we take uh, one of these flags, which is a a pretty good sized flag, I think anyways, and, and what we do is uh, with a $10 donation, uh, we take that and we'll place it uh, in your lawn or, or elsewhere, uh, wherever you can uh, authorize to do us, to, to put this legally anyways. Um, and we do that for the four most patriotic holidays we have on the calendar, a different flag each time uh, for Memorial Day, Flag Day, Independence Day, and Veterans Day, and it'll go up in that lawn uh, or on that business sign or what have you, uh, either on that event, that holiday, or a few days before. And I know a number of the councilors and, and folks here have, have taken part and supported this in the past and, and hopes, hope they do so again, even though I know some of you already have four, eight, or, or 12 of these that we've given you in the past. So I uh, just wanted to kind of thank that. And again, we'll have this uh, in the newspaper and such in the coming days. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Council Nicole. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I really don't have too much. I want to just reiterate that I'm very happy that the two uh, chiefs were here this evening. I think it's very important that the community understand that we are concerned, our department heads are concerned, certainly our emergency responders are very concerned and working toward coming to some resolution um, of this issue and catch the perpetrators who are causing so much disruption in our community right now. Um, also, I just want to add to all of the nice things that have been said about the library. The library does have wonderful services, but what the library has that you do not often see in an awful lot of public buildings is one of the nicest, most friendly and helpful staffs you're ever going to want to meet. They go above and beyond, and they make you feel at home right from the get-go. So if you haven't had an opportunity in a while to get there, Reintroduce yourself to the library in Southbridge. It's certainly worth um, a visit. And also, um, while I was not able to attend, I did have occasion to go by towards the end and notice there were quite a few people at the um, park yesterday afternoon for the Relay uh, Fun Day and uh, looked like a good time. So um, I'm glad to see the organizers putting something like that together. It was great. Um, that's really all I have right now. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Council Vandal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In my travels, I've noticed quite a few trees on Main Street that, that have died, uh, you know, when they, have, when they have time. I don't want them to run out tomorrow morning, and, but when they have time, they could, you know, take a look at them and, and get rid of them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council. Council Amana. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, I just have a couple things. Um, first... Um, my daughter, Olivia, is 10 years old, likes to ride her bike, and 
her and my husband at times will take the bike through the cemetery Oak Ridge and there's graffiti on that she's noticed on um, I think the, the Wells um, tomb site. The mausoleum. the mausoleum. Okay, thank you, Councilor Vandal. And they, she brought this to my attention a few weeks ago, and then they took another bike ride, and she goes, Mom, you didn't get rid of it. <laughs> so, and then she said, there, there's more. So I, I just want to bring this to your attention. I'm pretty sure you, um, the DPW does know about it. I had spoke with Mrs. Blakely before about it, but I did tell Olivia that I would bring it to your attention tonight. Um, and also, I received an email in regards to Jake breaking down at Commercial Drive and 169 going in and out. And I was also sent a link. They, they had taken a video of it, but the link is broken. So, so I wasn't able to look at that. Um, and I guess they're asking if there's anything that we can do to put signs up um, in regards to the Jake break-in. I don't believe there's anything we can do on 169 because that's a state highway, but I know Commercial Drive is our property. So if there's any way we can look into that, if that would go on a traffic commission um, agenda item. Um, but, you know, Jake Breakin, that's loud. It's, it's a nuisance, you know, especially if they do it on purpose. And uh, I also got a link for, like, a town out in Holyoke. They have, like, fines for people that actually Jake Break if they got the, their signs up. So if that's something we can look into and talk about, maybe at a traffic commission meeting or something. Um, I'd appreciate it. And I would also like to thank the uh, police department and the fire department for all the work they've been doing over the, well, all the work they always do, but the extra work they have been doing over the last few weeks. Um, thank you. And that's it. Thank you, Council. Uh, just to piggyback one thing off the Jake break, I believe that they had that discussion before with uh, Casella in, it was going well for a while, but I think uh, it is coming back again. You know, I'm gone most of the day, so I don't see it, but I, I know I've heard it a couple times. Um, and I know they, they did reach out to the drivers because they can also not use their Jake brakes. They can use the other brake. Uh, so if you could look into that, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Councilor Marcucci. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just have uh, one issue tonight. And it's probably through you to Ms. Harnoy's. Karen, in our packet, we received the um, office lease space rent from the Southbridge Public School System for the Worcester County Community Action Council. Now, that contract took effect in January of 2013, as it's stated here. And in reading the contract, the, the building belongs to the town of Southbridge. But in the contract, the landlord is the Southbridge Public Schools. And if you look at the base rent and the monthly payments, um, actually the term of this lease is to June 30th, 2023. So I have a couple questions. Number one, who's receiving the rent? Is it the town of Southbridge or is it the school department? Sure. The school department. So if we're the landlord, why is the school department receiving approximately from what it looks like right now on year, uh, lease year, say from the first year to the 10th year, it's approximately, I think if you average it out, probably about $70,000 a year. Mm -hmm. I don't know that they, that the school department, I would assume that they did not turn the building back over to the town. They did. Hmm. When, we, when we turned the, new, the um, middle high school over, the brand new facility over to the school, Southbridge High School, as we once knew it on Cole Avenue, was turned back over to the town. 
It was done officially at one of our meetings here. Has oh. to be. Has to be. Well, let me look into as it well to see as what Wells. I can find. And Karen, do you know? So it would be the school department, and Kathy, maybe you know this also because of your position with the um, building of the new school. Who determined the term of the rent? Would that be the school department? And if so, did the town, a town manager, have any influence on the number of years that they're going to be renting um, space at the high school? I do believe that the contract is signed by the superintendent at the time, Eric Ely, and I believe the business manager, who was Terry Wigan. So no input that you know of? Not that I know from of. From the town? Yeah. I'll let Councilor Nicola. She Thank might you. have some information for um, the council. I was present at a meeting that was held in the town manager's office. It was myself um, as the chair of the council at the time. Councilor Clements as the vice chair. Terry Wiggins, who was the, business, the school bus uh, business manager, and Eric Ely, who was the school superintendent, with Chris Clark. And we were informed by um, Mr. Wiggins and Mr. Ely that they were basically parceling out Cole Avenue for use by themselves for the administration of the school and that they were also going to be leasing out some of the office space. It was, um, that contract was put together by, as Mrs. Harnois has just stated, by Mr. Wiggins and Mr. Ely. They, they are the ones who, who set that whole thing in motion. The town had very little to do with that. And I'm not sure, um, I'm assuming this is part of Councilor Marcucci's question, but I would hope that that $70,000 a year is reflected in um, what they get every year. Um, because that is the town's building, not the school's building. So if they are in fact keeping the, uh, the proceeds for that, that should be certainly something that is you know, noted in their budget. Um, and the other piece that I would just ask is who is maintaining those, those offices? Are, is the school department's custodial staff cleaning those, build, those, uh, those offices? And is that how they're getting, you know, reconciling, keeping this money? I, I don't know. But I would assume that that would be their answer. That's all I have on that. Go ahead, Councilor Marcucci. Thank you, Councilor Nicola. And one more thing. If we own that building, and I'm reading the contract, then the town is responsible for any repair. I know we replaced the boilers not long ago, but any repairs that happen, the town is responsible for that, and it's coming out of the town side of the um, budget. So that's, that's concerning for me. Um, if they're noticed as the landlord, then, you know, the school department has to take some responsibility on that. I don't believe the town should be um, in the business of renting space, not receiving any of the proceeds, but we're responsible for maintenance of that whole school. So I think what I'm going to do is probably schedule a, a EHS meeting and find out what's going on um, because like I said, this contract goes until June 30th, 2023. So anything you could find out for me would be appreciated. Thank you very much, that's all I have. Thank you, Councilor. Agenda item number three, uh, 13, discussion on the next meeting date. Councilor Marcucci. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That will be Monday, May 19th at uh, 6.30. We're going to have a, bub I'm, excuse me, we're going to have a budget public hearing at 6.30 p.m. right here in the council chambers and our town council meeting will um, start at 7 p.m. So um, 6.30, no. immediately following um, yeah. the budget public hearing. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, and one last thing before we adjourn, I would first like to welcome our little guest, Samuel, to his first town council meeting. Uh, it's never too uh, young to start following uh, about your town. So welcome and thank you. And you were a pleasure sitting there, very polite and courteous. Thank you. With that being said, agenda item number 14, adjournment. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone.